Methods for Testing Systems, Simulated, Live, Volume, Beta, Functional and Acceptance. Now, testing involves checking that a system is functioning correctly and delivering the expected information as per the requirements of clients. When a system is tested, a variety of different samples of data are entered into a system using both expected and unexpected forms of data in order to see how a system responds. So we want to put in the types of data that the system is probably going to expect to take and see how it calculates that data and ensures that we get the appropriate information as a result of those calculations. But we also want to put in some data out of left field too, because as when you do program, when a system doesn't get the data type it's expecting, it can lead to crashes and also other elements that can affect integrity. And so we need to put in mechanisms in place to avoid these crashes taking place and errors. So that's what we're testing as well, not just at how the system copes, but the things we put in place to prevent the system crashing also get tested as well. So a system will be tested using test data, but you couldn't guess that one, okay, which is entered into a system in order to experiment with data and check for errors. And so what we're going to look at now is a variety of different types of data and tests that can be used in order to test systems and the programs we make and ensure they function correctly. So the first one is a simulated data test. And as the circle says, it's made up data, okay, this data is made to emulate potential live data and often is done by a development team when they're in the initial stages of creating the actual program they're developing. Um, this way they can just think of types of data up the top of their head, enter the system and see how it responds. Okay, and they can also play around with alternative data types that the system might be expecting, test them out and see how the system responds to that as well. But essentially it's the made up data that's made to simulate what users of the full system could possibly be entering into the system in order to test it. Now, we did mention users, they might come into it when we get to our next data type of the live data test. Now, this is when we are using real world data. We might put the system into a real world scenario and we're putting real data into the system now from real sources, such as real users of the system. This might mean putting it on a network and multiple users are accessing it now. How is the system responding now to real data coming from real data sources? So in sense, it is the real test of the system. It's seeing how it's working in live conditions. So they're the two types of data being used, simulated and live data. And now we'll get to the different formats of testing that take place. And we'll be using a variety of these formats coming up. So firstly is what's known as a beta test. This is testing a pre-release version of a system, which is known as a beta version. All right, you might've seen this with online gaming. They release a beta to test components of the system, usually online. And because you can't test that in a realistic environment within the closed setting of the developers, okay, you do have to put it online and allow real users to access it to test the strain that's put on the system when users are accessing it from all over the world to play a specific game. So with this test, we are, we obviously are using this pre-release version and thus it's not the final version. So what we really want here is some evaluative feedback. So we're getting feedback from the users themselves, as well as the project team's reflections of the system so that they can make changes before they create the final solution that will be published and then put out for commercial use for the users. So that's beta testing using that beta version. The next type of testing is that of volume testing, and this might be done in conjunction with those online beta tests that I just mentioned, because here we're seeing the capacity of data that a system could potentially take. So it could be that we're using a single system and putting in as much data as we can and seeing if the integrity of the system starts to slow down from the amount of data we're putting in at a time. But it could also be in that online setting as well, where we've got users all over the world accessing the same system through a variety of servers does the integrity start to drop when a certain amount of users are accessing the system at the same time? Do we have to set up more uh, servers and disperse and make a more distributed network so that it can reduce strain on each individual server and hopefully spread out the volume so there isn't that much pressure and the system maintains integrity? If not, what can we do within the actual system we develop to reduce file sizes and processing and graphic intense power so that the system can still run efficiently when being accessed by so many users. So that's what volume testing is about, the capacity the system can handle, whether it be users or data itself, okay, that can affect the integrity of the system. 
The next is actual functional testing. And this one is probably the most straightforward in relation to does the system do what it's made to do? Does it satisfy the desired functionality requirements and user experience as per its design specifications? So is it doing what we made it for and is it providing the experience we wanted to create? So we're testing that. We're ensuring that the sub programs that we've put into our actual system are working efficiently. They're creating an environment that satisfies the user's need and it gives them quite an intuitive experience that is positive to hopefully keep them coming back but essentially it's also processing the data correctly and giving appropriate information back to the user so it's doing everything we want it to do it's functioning correctly and then the final one and this could be in a response to a live data test that is done in a functional environment by users is acceptance testing it's that the users are signing off that their needs are being met by the system. So they're testing the systems. They are actually saying, yep, it's doing the things I wanted to do. It's providing me with the user experience. And they're saying that and we're getting feedback from the users. Alternatively, the system might not be achieving those points and the users might give feedback, whether it be to it's not functioning correctly, I'm getting some incorrect information from the system, or there are some glitches within the system, or they're not finding their experience to be positive and it's not as intuitive as they'd like their experience to be when accessing the system. So with that feedback, changes can be made once again and then re-shown to the user through acceptance testing and they can then sign off saying everything's A-OK. -okay. So I hope this video has given you a good understanding of different methods for testing, the different data that can be used in simulated, made up data and live data, real world data, and then the different contexts of testing we can do. Beta being a pre-release version of the system being tested, volume testing, the capacity a system can take before its integrity starts to be affected, functional testing, that the system does what it's intended to do, and our sub-programs are working correctly and providing correct information, and providing the user with the appropriate experience, and acceptance testing, that the user is happy with their experience and what the system is accomplishing for them, and thus they can sign off and we can say our system's good to go.